I can't. All right. Let's roll, my friends. Thank you all for joining me. And thank you for coming to WordCamp Dayton. This is a wonderful event. First time I attended here was like five years ago. And it's been a special part of uh, every year since. About five years ago, I was starting to get involved in WordPress in a few different ways. And I was kind of catching the bug, as a lot of us have. And I was making some plugins and releasing them for free. I was helping co-organize a meetup up in Jackson, Michigan, where I'm from, and attending my first few WordCamps and kind of getting hooked, thinking like, this is, this is a really cool vibe. I love the culture of this, this community that I'm stumbling across. I love the information that's being shared and some of these people seem like I can learn a lot from, a lot of cool stuff going on. And I was kind of getting interested in doing more and finding new, new ways to find my place or participate in this community. And on Google Plus, of all places, I stumbled across someone saying they wanted to start a WordPress show and they were looking for co-hosts. I didn't know the person, but I said, hey, maybe that's the thing for me. I'm comfortable speaking and pretending like I know something, even though I don't. And so the next thing you know, I found myself co-hosting the WP Roundtable show back in early 2014 with a couple strangers. Now, over the next five years, I have... Uh, continued co-hosting this show with, along with a revolving door of no less than 10 co-hosts. The past couple of years it's really been just me and I have somehow persuaded uh, around 200 different people who work in the industry to come on my show and, and talk about what it is they do and their stories and what success means to them and all that fun stuff. Along the way I learned a lot of different things and, it, and it's this is a fun opportunity for me to begin to share a little bit of my reflections just looking back on this time, getting to talk with what I think are the, the brightest minds in the industry. I learned a handful of things about what they've done and what their lessons were when it came to succeeding. A lot of the people I talked to have been very successful at what they've done. I learned a little bit about the makeup of this industry, who's working in WordPress, who's actually doing stuff with it and moving things on the web these days. And I also learned a little bit about myself and what it takes to run a successful side project. If you're curious who these people are, here's a list of all their names. Some of them might look familiar. A handful of them are even in this room right now. I've interviewed a lot of, a lot of people. And these, these are very special people. I'm very excited about this list. feel very privileged to have had an opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with this many amazing minds. But don't feel bad if these names mean nothing to you. Maybe these brands do, because these are some of the brands represented by the companies who I have had the privilege of talking to at length. This should give us a little bit of context, I guess, uh, to understand like, who, who these people are that we're talking about. Now, Let's start, let's start first with some of the reflections that I have uh, about, about me looking back. How, how was I able to do this so consistently and, and what did I learn about myself in the process? It's a lot of things. Uh, maybe the most significant is what it feels like to regret experimenting with so many different hairstyles over the years. Way too many. Uh, anyway, story time. Uh, the other day I went into my favorite coffee shop back home and the barista said, Morning Kyle, the usual? And I was like, this, uh, because like achievement unlocked, right? I couldn't wait to get home and, and tell my wife about how awesome it was that I, I went the same place enough times and ordered the same thing that someone said, the usual Kyle? Uh, that's great. That is, uh, that sense of familiarity is something that I appreciate. And I think everyone else, I think you can relate to that. We, like we love that familiarity feeling. We all love to feel like we're in cheers everywhere we go, except more often than not, we, it feels more like first day at a new high school everywhere we go. Some of you are maybe feeling like that in this room right now. Feeling maybe a little intimidated, a little out of place, a little like everybody else knows each other, everybody else knows more than me, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I can relate to that feeling. I felt that for a long time. I still do to some extent. And so I know, I know what it's like. 
and how difficult it can be to overcome. It reminds me of how uh, Frodo must have felt at the Council of Elrond, you know? It's a beautiful scene, of course, where, uh, uh, where a hobbit of all creatures is uh, sitting amongst like lords and heroes and literal living legends, and, and the conversation is way above his head in pay grade and doesn't understand what's going on and, and feels so out of place, and we feel that way all the time. Uh, so in this, this journey of getting to talk with a lot of brilliant people, I learned uh, an important lesson about the fact that there is actually a place for me. There are things that I'm capable of doing, and there, there's, there's a spot that I can fill. And I just have to pers be persistent and find it. I think that's the case for all of us. We can all kind of find our place, our role to play. We all have something unique and special in some way. And this really has helped me find that. I've had to come to appreciate that I am unique and different than everyone else. I am not, uh, I am not Chris Lemmer or Matt Mullenweg. I am not uh, Carrie Dills or Becca Rice. I am not Pippin Williamson. I am not Steve Grunwell or Adam Silver or Dustin uh, Hartslayer. I am uh, I'm Kyle. That's it. And I've got a few little things that I can do in the place that I live and with the people that I know. And there's a place for me that I, can, uh, that I can flourish in. And I think that's the case for everybody else. And I encourage you to embark on that journey and find your place. I also learned a little bit about uh, what it takes to sustain a project. Like, I have started more side projects than... Well, it's been a lot of side projects. I've forgotten about more side projects that I started than, than a lot of people start in their life. And this is one little side project that's, for some reason, when I look back on it, the biggest thing that stands out to me is, like, how on earth did I just, did I keep doing it? Did I not give up or stop uh, like I did with all the other side projects I started? Well, I think it's, uh, I learned a little lesson about strategically uh, tricking yourself into a situation where it's really difficult to cancel on your commitments. And I, so every couple months, I, I schedule all my guests for, for months in advance, and I put that on the calendar at a specific time, and my family's on board that that's the time that I do this every single week. And it's very awkward and difficult for me to cancel that. And that's enough of a trick for me to still be doing it five years later. Silly little hack, I suppose. I also look back and appreciate that my audience isn't huge, this show is relatively unknown, despite the fact that I've been doing it for so long and that I've talked to like all the notable people in the industry, really. Uh, even in spite of that, no one knows about it. And few people really even tune in relative to a lot of the other cool shows in the industry that are a little, a little bit more polished. I've learned uh, the value of polishing things and, and, and putting in a little bit extra effort to make it good and to market it. But I also know that one thing that I did do, even though maybe I didn't uh, make it the most presentable and market it really hard, I did release stuff. I made things that are out there now, and I did that consistently for years. And if I had, in one hand, something that was beautiful and polished that anybody could objectively be proud of, and on the other hand, things that were actually released to the world, I'd take that every day of the week. But at the same time, I have learned to appreciate that making compromises in quality do limit my growth potential. If I spent a little bit more time on this project, I would have a bigger audience. Thing is, I don't care that much about that. It's not what it's about for me, so I don't. I look back at what I thought I was gonna get out of this in the beginning compared to what I actually did in the end. I had some expectations and some hopes. If I invest in this, here's what I think the outcome might be. I was quite mistaken, but I'm not dejected over this reality. I am actually very at peace with this and pleased in the end because I would take what's on this side of the screen any day as well. I'm much more satisfied with these results. I find these things to be much more valuable and enriching to my life. Uh, let's talk now about the makeup of this WordPress community. These are, these are my reflections on just who the people are 
what are their profiles, what are they like and interested in, and, and where are they from and their backgrounds and all that. Uh, with the disclaimer, of course, that my network is large relative to a lot of people's in this particular industry, and yet it's still microscopic relative to the global industry. My network is a reflection of me and my characteristics in life. And so being a, uh, a, a white male, 30-something in middle America, my network really reflects that. The kind of events that I attend and parties that I go to and discussions I engage in and people who are introduced to me and so on reflect the characteristics that I have in the places that I go. And so my network is not as diverse as the global community is, though I'm working hard on fixing that problem. Even so, even with this disclaimer, I think that there are some noteworthy observations to make and reflections to discuss. First, we are in a young industry. And I'm not talking about the age of the people in the industry. We'll get to that momentarily. I'm talking about the age of the industry itself. This industry has not been around a long time, but it is beginning to mature. We're seeing the first signs of real maturation in this market. Now, all industries follow a very similar trajectory. All of them begin moving through this highly fractured phase where the industry is made up of a tremendous number of small players. We're talking about lots and lots and lots of micro companies all doing very similar or even exactly the same thing. That's kind of like what our industry looks like right now. We have tons of designers and developers and product makers with small single digit number teams. Tons in this industry. But the market is beginning to mature and we're beginning to see some signs of consolidation. Consolidation occurs in every industry over time when eventually what occurs is those small companies start to get a little bit bigger and the next thing you know some of them are maybe merging with or acquiring other companies or putting their competitors out of business and so gradually there are a smaller number of players and those existing players are much bigger than any were previously and new entrants to the market are finding the barrier to entry much greater harder to start a new business and be competitive because it's a little bit more uh, dominated by large players with more resources and that are more deeply entrenched. And so eventually we get way up on this chart to a point where there are a very small number of players, just huge corporations dominating it. And the entire industry is employed by just those two players. I'm sure we can think of lots of industries that are like that, that are very mature and established and are highly consolidated. And there's only, there are very, very, very few like small entrepreneurs running scrappy small teams uh, trying to disrupt the giants. That's, uh, that's not the case with WordPress. Right now we're still highly fractured with tons of small companies, but we are seeing it begin to be a lot harder to enter the market than it used to be and become competitive. Like new entrants, people getting started are now more commonly like taking funding or like uh, um, starting like new ventures with big teams or uh, new divisions of bigger companies are the new entrants as opposed to like just somebody throwing together some code on the weekend and a logo and calling themselves a business. That still happens a little bit but it's getting a little more difficult because the market is more competitor and if you do so you're going head to head with teams of 50 or 100 or 500 people. Uh, this is a, a signal uh, that the market is still young. This is, these are the guests that um, I talked to and the percentage of them who are self-employed versus employed by a company. Now, in a young, highly fractured industry like WordPress, we see the pink side being much bigger. A lot of people are self-employed in this industry. That's still the case. Probably more than half of the people in this room are self-employed. I would, I would guess. That's, that's a distinct possibility. I could be wrong. Maybe it's close to half. Um, but in a highly mature, much more consolidated industry, the white side will be much, much larger and there will be very, very few self-employed people. We're not there yet, but that is the direction that we're going. Uh, this shouldn't really surprise anybody. Uh, I've been told repeatedly over and over, and I've witnessed this myself, I've seen signs that the WordPress 
community is actually doing pretty good and very open-minded and very uh, committed to com correcting this like gender gap and diversity gaps that we experience in tech. Uh, very forward thinking and trying to do things actively to promote diversity and to help with this problem. Uh, but there's still a tremendous way to go. Still, we're still not there. We're, we're actually not even close. But uh, generally, we're all uh, doing our best to correct it. And I'm optimistic about the future. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done. This is the makeup of my guests, which I look at this and I'm quite disappointed. Though I have tried, I've tried, and I continue to try harder and harder uh, to work on this and to increase the diversity in my personal network and in the guests on my show. This is this was maybe the best that I could do in the first five years. Uh, turnover is a big deal. This industry is young. Uh, it is volatile. There are a lot of businesses coming and going. There are a lot of uh, young people employed in the industry who are not established in their careers and are changing jobs quickly. Um, and so I see a high percentage of people uh, changing jobs and moving on to something new all the time. Uh, we see definitely big age gaps. Now this one I think is a little interesting. There are a couple, there are a couple things that I uh, have come up with upon reflection of this chart. As you can see, the overwhelming majority of the people on my show have been in their 30s, my age group. Now, the first, the first factor, I think, is these were people invited by me, which is, means they were people that I met and became acquainted with because I never invite strangers on the show. It's only people that I've met. And unsurprisingly, a huge majority of the people that I end up meeting and interacting with through social means are in a similar age group to me. They're attending the same functions. Uh, they're sharing in similar interests, engaging in same discussions that I am. And what do you know? They're similar age to me. Uh, so that is one reason why I think this is large. There are a couple of other reasons that aren't me specific. One is the age of the technology, I think, contributes to this a little bit. Um, WordPress is still a little bit too new to be dominating or really uh, really penetrating the, the enterprise market. So like big businesses, uh, people more entrenched in their careers. Um, it's not uh, as prevalent there. But at the same time, WordPress is kind of old and is not the hot new thing that the kids are doing any longer. And so there's this middle age group that is still really passionate about WordPress that uh, a lot of us started using WordPress when it actually was the hip new thing. When we were in our 20s, when we were the young kids trying out the new things, and we were the, the people who could afford to risk playing around with new technologies and just seeing what we like and making a decision about what to go with because we were getting started as opposed to being established. Um, so that stage in our careers uh, impacts the technology that we technology that we end up using. So it's not surprising to me that a lot of us in kind of this getting close to the middle of our career but still in the early half of our career are the ones really leaning on WordPress. And the third reason why I think that this, uh, this slice of the pie is so dominant is I think our age group is very disproportionately represented at conferences, at least the conferences that I attend. Now this age group is one where us People like myself are not, are commonly not so settled into a life which restricts us from traveling at our leisure. I am capable of going anywhere that I want to really almost any time. I can attend a lot of events. I'm not really like settled and locked in and, and, and chained to home. Uh, and I have the youthful energy to do so as much as I like. But I also am old enough that I have that independence and the financial means to do so, which the younger crowd doesn't quite yet. Maybe still in college, maybe not having the financial resources yet, uh, or the independence to 
take off for conferences. So my age group is very well represented at conferences because of just these life situations. And that, those are the three reasons that I believe uh, this age group is uh, dominant in my network and on the guests that I've had on my show. Uh, yeah, so I live in the U.S. and I haven't traveled much outside the U.S., so my network is not very uh, big outside of the U.S. This is a map of my guests. That's kind of fun to make. Um, I've got a ways to go. I've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of networking outside of this country to do. And the WordPress community is global. I think the U.S. is disproportionately represented uh, anywhere you go throughout WordPress. Um, the spotlight is always on the American developers contributing and the American companies uh, moving and shaking the industry, even though there are just as many or more uh, great people doing things outside of the U.S. They don't get the same level of attention or appreciation. That's, I, that's, that's for sure. Uh, this is a little map of... This is not very meaningful for reflections or anything. This is just... I made a map and I say... Look at that. Look at that. I, I put pins on a map of all my guests. There's no takeaway from this other than I've been getting around this country a little bit, meeting the WordPress community. It's pretty exciting. There are a lot of great communities around here. I'm very, I'm very fond of the Ohio WordPress community. A lot of great, a lot of great stuff happening in uh, Dayton, Columbus, Northeast Ohio, all over the place. Pittsburgh has a really good community. A lot of cool stuff happening in California and Florida. Uh, but the greatest is in Michigan, of course. I want to reflect a little bit. WordPress is having its sweet 16 this year, actually. And if we were to really break up the years that WordPress has been around into four-year chunks, we could, for fun, call each of those four-year chunks an era. And I want to share some reflections on each of those eras. Now, these are reflections based on not just my conversations with all of these guests, and I've talked to some from each era at length, um, but also from my extensive research and, and just reading the history uh, of uh, this project and this community and uh, being there for a lot of it. The, the first class is the smallest. That's the first thing to say about it. And this is, it was small, and it's difficult to find a guest for my show from this class because it's such a small group. This is long before WordPress was dominating in market share and was a household name. It was, it was just the, this new player. It was small, and uh, it rose quickly, but still at this stage, it was one of many options for powering your blog. And so there weren't a, tr you know, a tremendous number of people using it. Also due to attrition, there are a lot of people who are very active in the WordPress scene back then who are no longer using it. This was a long time ago. So at this stage, it's a little bit difficult to really find a whole lot of people who are truly active and participating in the WordPress project during this stage. But it was an interesting time. There was just a lot of excitement. There was a lot of kind of maybe younger people like I was talking about trying out new things, experimenting with different technologies, pushing the limits of different platforms and trying out all of them and trying to extend them and hack away at the code. And people like Matt Mullingweg himself, one of the co-founders of the project, you know, just like a young blogger and hacker and playing around with code and next thing you know, it's kind of popular and it's becoming a focus. And, uh, and open source was just like a really passionate idea uh, that they all held true to. Uh, the next class things started to get a little bit interesting because the project rose in popularity beyond the expectations of really anybody. And this is when monetization of WordPress really started to become more commonplace. Though it was a contentious issue, how do we monetize anything we're doing here? Is it okay to sell any software that we make? Is it okay to sell a theme or a plugin? That was a very heated argument during this era. And uh, we saw the first uh, beginnings of a community start to formalize. The first WordCamps took place. It's starting to s expand through word of mouth. This is the era also where WordPress kind of like chopped the market share and became like significantly larger than Drupal or Joomla or all the other players and 
It's being recognized as an important tool. Um, and this is where a lot of theme creators were suddenly making a whole lot more money than they expected to uh, selling some themes. The following era, and at the, er at the very beginning of this is when I really started actively participating in WordPress in like early 2011. So I'm still kind of new to the scene, I, I think. This is when we really saw the, the community exploding in size. This is where uh, WordPress started to just dominate the market share, became the undisputed leader, having more websites than like all the next three competitors combined. Um, plug this is also an era where uh, a number of prominent companies like Woo Themes and, and Elegant Themes and iThemes went from like being a theme focused company to a plugin focused company and plugins started to be the hot thing to sell. Well, it's, a, it's a bit of an interesting time. The software itself began to mature and turn into a content management system as opposed to a blogging platform and spent this era really battling that image that it had from the early days. And then the most recent years have also been interesting because this is really the era where WordPress is kind of like going into uncharted territory. This, it's, especially for a content management system, like none of them have ever done this before or gone here or achieved this level of success or evolved uh, this many years. It it's, it's, feels very new, like we're going where no platform has gone before. And this is the era where we start to call WordPress a platform instead of, of like a, a blogging tool or, or a content management system. Now, WordPress is being used for weird stuff. Nobody predicted. Crazy things. Steve is probably building absurd things with WordPress that nobody's, nobody would have envisioned five years ago. Crazy things that he can't even talk about, I'm sure. Uh, now we're seeing, like I talked about before, the market is maturing and we're seeing like legitimate companies form that are employing a lot of people and making real money and taking funding from venture capitalists and um, getting acquired from major corporations and uh, suddenly like major companies. I'm talking like Microsoft and Google are paying attention to WordPress and investing in the scene. This was unheard of before when it was this funny little niche. Uh, and it's also much more competitive than it ever was before. We saw in the previous era, actually the, the era before this, was the first time where competition started to be a real thing, where instead of like there was one form plugin, there was one e-commerce tool, you know, there was one uh, membership solution for this or that, uh, then suddenly there were three, now there's a dozen of each, and it's highly competitive, and starting one is a major undertaking, and you're going against the big boys and girls. Uh, now back to just some general observations about, uh, we're still on the people and the makeup of this community a little bit, even though I uh, sidetracked and just wanted to talk a little bit about history. Um, this is one of the more cliche things that I hear from every guest, as though like they're the first to say it, except they're not. Um, everybody says, you know, <laughs> it's kind of a funny story, I got into this by accident. You know, okay, cute. Uh, except every single guest said that. Uh, that's not surprising. This is a young industry. It's not like your career counselors at college were saying, I'm gonna put you into the WordPress track. You know, that's, that sounds like the right thing for you. It's not established, that's not a thing. All right, a anybody who's working in this industry kind of like stumbled into it as it sort of like exploded unexpectedly. And most everyone has a college education, the majority of the people that I talked to, a lot of them had really crazy unrelated uh, careers and like the you know the military or a firefighter or uh, living out of their car or something weird um i heard repeatedly i don't know what to take away from this but there's a lot of people that i talked to have been successful in wordpress who are saying things to me like oh, i'm a little burned out on travel i was you know in the previous era going to uh like every other word camp you know when in the world there were 20 and i was trying to go to all of them and now there's like a, a hundred and i don't even know how many 125 probably, probably more than that globally. And uh, so I heard a lot of these successful people say like, I'm kind of scaling back a little bit. Um, but they're also getting to that age group. Like a lot of the people that I talked about before uh, were at a point where they were, they were young and free to just, whoa, this, this thing's taken off. I made this 
goofy theme on a weekend and suddenly I'm making five figures in a month and uh, I never expected this so I'm going to quit my uh, silly day job and just like hop around to these word camps across the country like it's not an uncommon, uncommon story from the era. Um, every, like I said, everyone was self-taught. Nobody had formal training for any of this. Hardly any. Hardly anybody. And uh, this is of note for a significant number of people. I heard this over and over. This became uh, a broken record. The first word camp was a major turning point. And was, this was the case for me as well. I'm, I'm no exception. First time I went, I was like, what is this? This is crazy. People are just like sharing this information. People are coming to me and being like, how can I help you? You know, what can I do to make your life easier or to, or to fix your websites? And I was, had just nothing but problems that I needed solved. And I was shocked. I come from a business school background where I was like, that's not how it works. We're supposed to be competing against each other and trying to just like subvert the other and like beat you and, and trick you and, and, and show the public how you suck and I'm great. Like a dog eat dog world, right? I was very young and naive, but that was my business school training. And when I came into this community where it was like, whatever, let's just help each other out. I was like, you know, the, the, the clouds parted and angels sung. And I said, I'm never leaving this. Like, this is beautiful. I'm here for life. Let's move on to some of the lessons that people exchanged with me or that I learned either uh, explicitly from them telling me the guests or implicitly, um, just like m me interpreting their stories. Uh, advice that they told me over and over. The uh, jack of all trades, kind of going out of style. Very difficult to market a jack of all trades. But a specialist, someone who's actually like really good at a thing, it's really easy to market, really easy to employ, and really easy to pay top dollar. Uh, so specialize when you can. It's a little bit difficult. I ran an agency myself for a while and I found, and I can appreciate how hard it can be to start like saying, uh, we offer a dozen things, and now we're gonna only offer six things and let go. And, and if somebody asks for those other things, we're gonna say, no, we don't do that. And that was really hard and it felt unnatural. And the result is quite surprising that this actually helps your business. Suddenly I'm able to charge more, I'm getting more customers, I'm closing them at a higher rate and everything is going much better because I stopped offering more things. And this was uh, advice, so not just for my guests, but for me as well. Uh, everybody just keeps saying raising prices, raising prices, raising prices, over and over, broken record. Uh, but there's a lot of credence to that. I think it's smart. I think it's smart. I think the majority of us are not charging quite enough. Uh, people said, uh, like I talked a little bit about before, there's incredible value in releasing things to the world. I heard a lot of stories about people who waited too long to release something or uh, were a little bit too, uh, too cautious or too nervous about sharing it with the world or uh, overcome with that imposter syndrome, like whatever I make isn't, isn't going to be good enough, but the people who, who shipped things, even though they were crappy and today they're embarrassed about those early iterations, they shipped it and iterated often, and that is the model that succeeds. Uh, I heard good advice from a lot of people about understanding when it, something's not working and when it's time to uh, pivot or move on to something different. This is a, a valuable skill and the people who were most successful were not the ones who just blindly persisted indefinitely. They were the people who uh, gave everything their best shot and worked super, super hard. And uh, when things weren't working, they learned from what they tried, took all of that experience as though it were uh, wealth that they had amassed and invested it into a new thing where they were much better off than the last. There's no such thing as like, stepping back and starting from scratch because along the way you've accumulated a whole lot of knowledge and, uh, and talent and connections and you're not starting back where you were before. You've still moved forward. Um, everybody has stories. I always ask about like, what's a horror story? Like worst client project and issues with employees and bosses and so on. And everybody says something to the effect of, uh, 
if if the communication is good, like there's almost no problem you can't solve. Over communicate and stuff. Uh, engaging the community is absolutely a like fast track to success. Um, my phone stopped ringing from clients when I stayed home and lived like a hermit, and so my business suffered. But not just not just business, but everything relating to my work and my life and my satisfaction with my job was enhanced and enriched when I left home and participated in a community like this. And also embraced this culture of like giving first. Don't approach any situation thinking like, what can I get out of this? Uh, but like, what can I add? What can I provide and help others? Much like what Steve so well put this morning, trying to help others. Good job, Steve. I'm like, I'm on fire because of you. Um, these, are, these are more me interpreting like the factors that I think were present in some of the stories that uh, were really successful. Um, some of them were just right place, right time. No denying it, they'd be the first to admit it. You can't copy some of the people who uh, you model yourself after uh, because they were working in a different time. There is no doubt that WordPress's success and market share was like so fast and unprecedented that a lot of people who were no more talented than you or more experienced, in fact, probably less so, were throwing together little things and shocked, shocked to discover that they were selling like crazy. There were a lot of people who were just doing the right thing at the right time and became successful as a result. And so this is something to remind yourself of. If your project isn't taken off and you're not prospering like so-and-so did, remind yourself that the industry is a little bit different now. You can't copy what they did because the situation is not the same. A lot of them failed over and over repeatedly, and it was just the last thing that they did that really took off. So if you talk to all kinds of these people, like the founders of the, these huge hosting companies uh, who are incredibly successful right now, those are the folks who like tried thing after thing after thing, and they just flopped and fell on their face. I heard stories through my interviews from people who were like at rock bottom multiple times, living in their car, Nothing's going right, and somehow, fast forward the tape years later, and they are sitting on top of the mountain. And they will tell their stories much better, but uh, the truth is, um, none of them were one-hit wonders. I didn't talk to anybody like that. It was like, first thing exploded. I talked to a lot of people who look back and see a track record of more failures than successes. And that's not the picture that we see when we look at them. We see the successes, but they look back and they just see a trail of wreckage behind them. A lot of people who found success just had money. No, uh, simple as that. Some of them were fortunate enough to be in a situation where they could just take time off and not earn a paycheck and just invest in a project. Who knows what their situation was? They were all different. Maybe they just had a, a lot left over from a previous job or took a, 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 an offer from a company or sold something or just whatever. But they could just sit back and make no money for six months or a year or years and work on something. And most of us don't have that luxury. So some of them were successful just because they had that privilege. Some of them were successful because they took VC money and built a big project and hired an incredible team of the most talented uh, designers and developers in the industry and that took off. These are just factors that are realities behind some of the brands that you look and see prospering. A lot of them found their success from the people that they connected with and so many of those connections are made at events like this where you're sitting next to someone who has a lot in common with you and discover maybe your paths, maybe your trajectories are like aligned. And a lot of the really successful companies and people that I've talked to, it all started when they met the right person who wanted to go the same place with them. And, and just things took off from there. Uh, and lastly, of course, they just worked their butts off. These, I'm talking to people who just worked late at night, worked over the weekend, made the big sacrifices, let their social life suffer, uh, and, and grew something that meant a lot to them. Real quick, rapid fire, let's talk over some of the key points 
and then I covered here that I think are the most important. I managed to keep this side project versus the hundreds of others I started going for five years, and I think that's because I tricked myself into making it hard to not. Uh, the industry is changing. Our strategies must change. We can learn a lot of lessons from the people that we look at as successful in the industry. We can learn about how they worked hard and what they value and you know what, what they centered themselves on. But their specific tactics and strategies along the way probably won't work exactly for us, or at least in the same way. Because the industry is just fundamentally different. It's changed rapidly. Even what worked two years ago might be off the table today. All of us as a group, this can't be just a few people in leadership, it can't be just a bunch of us preaching up here on the stage who are, as Steve also talked about, not so, um, well, just fortunate in our positions. But uh, all of us, collectively, need to just work harder on this. Like, we're, we're, we're still not close. We're not there yet. Uh, and uh, we have a long way to go when it comes to diversity. Um, I think... I would ask, especially those of you who are new, to give the community a chance. Just open yourself up to the conversations you're going to have here. There are people who really want to help. There are people willing to approach the conversation with you and say, I'm not looking to get something from you. I'm looking to help you if I can. And just let them. And, and open yourself up to that. It might, it might change your life, and it did for a lot of us here. And, of course, if things aren't going quite as well as you had hoped, this is probably just the reality. I think you just haven't failed enough times. You might have to fail a few more times, but you'll get there, stick to it. Lastly, of course, no one to quit. And on that note, thank you for tuning in to this presentation. And uh, do we have any time for questions or no? Usually I'm pretty long-winded. We have time for 20 questions. No, we don't. Time for two questions. First in the back. Hi. Terry, hi. Okay, Tara asked a little bit about where are these emerging markets in WordPress? Like what is, what's kind of like on that, riding that wave a little bit and increasing and also like where the VC funding is going in this industry. That's a, that would be a fun thing to discuss at length because I think there are a lot of examples and I also think that we're in the early stages of this. So... A lot of the examples are anecdotal at this point, and, and it's difficult to really read too much into them because, as I said, it's early. So we can look and see, like, there's been venture capital invested over in this and this and this, but does that really mean that that's where the wave is going? Maybe, but we're not sure because it's, it's still a little early. We know that hosting is massive, and WordPress-specific hosting is just killing it right now. So a lot of the hosts... Uh, who are who only cater to WordPress and that's their game are just rocking and rolling They're growing and crazy and raising funding Round after round and and it's just crazy crazy town and all the hosts who aren't WordPress specific are like Heavily investing into WordPress and like saying that well now we offer managed WordPress hosting too And we're all about WordPress and we're gonna sponsor all the events and like WordPress 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 That's us and so hosting is like that we're pretty sure of. There's major venture capital, major wave in hosting, highly competitive, but still like all the money, all the money. Uh, as far as stuff outside of hosting, then it's a little more um, investments here and there. We see, we've seen like some agencies get really, really large. Most of those aren't taking funding. Most of those are bootstrapped. We've seen some like uh, maintenance companies uh, be acquired or, or very like specialized uh, development agencies in some cases who are really rocking and rolling like a certain discipline or a certain part of uh, I don't know what, what's being demanded these days. Um, some of those have 
been acquired or, or grown. Um, support companies sometimes have been able to scale up rapidly. Um, and some of the product companies are really rocking and rolling, like in e-commerce or uh, some of the forms plugins, but most of them are still bootstrapped. Still the overwhelming majority of the industry is still bootstrapped. I don't know that there's something specifically that stands out as like a way, if I knew it, like I'd be doing it probably. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Time for one more? No, we're done. Okay, great. Thanks for tuning in folks. <laughs>